In this presentation, we will solve the third MCQ based on complex exponential Fourier series and in this MCQ, four informations about a signal xt is given and using these four informations, we are required to find signal xt. So this question is very interesting and before moving to the solution, we will first read the question. It says, suppose we have given following informations about a signal xt. The first information is xt is real and odd. The second information is xt is a periodic signal with fundamental time period equal to 2. The third information is Fourier coefficients of xt is equal to 0 when mod n is greater than 1. And the fourth information is 1 over 2 integration from 0 to 2 mod xt square dt is equal to 1. So these are the four informations and we need to find the signal which satisfies all the above conditions. This means we need to find signal xt. There are four options and we are required to find the exact expression of signal xt and we can have it after decoding all the four informations given in the problem. So let's move to our solution. In the first information it says xt is a real and odd signal. xt is a real as well as odd signal and from xt cn pairs we know when xt is real and odd, cn is imaginary and odd. Now we will move to the second information. It says xt is a periodic signal with t0 equal to 2. So we have the fundamental time period. It is equal to 2. And we know omega0 is equal to 2 pi divided by t0. So 2 pi divided by 2 will give us pi. So omega0 is equal to pi. Now let's talk about the third information. This information is very important. It says Fourier coefficients of xt is equal to 0 for mod n greater than 1. So cn is equal to 0 for mod n greater than 1. Or we can say, or we can say cn is equal to 0 when n is less than minus 1 and when n is greater than 1. Now this implies we are having only three non-zero coefficients c minus 1, c0 and c1 because n is an integer and from minus 1 to 1 there are three possibilities n can be minus 1, 0 and 1 and other than these three values when n is anything cn is going to be 0. So there are possibilities for only three non-zero coefficients c minus 1, c0 and c1. Now you have to focus on very important point here. You can see cn is imaginary as well as odd. So cn is odd and we know for odd signals the average value average value is equal to 0 and when average value is 0 this implies the coefficient a0 is also equal to 0 and we know coefficient a0 is same as c0 and we know a0 is 0 therefore c0 is also equal to 0. So c0 here is equal to 0 and we are left with two non-zero coefficients c-1 and c1. So we can write signal xt using complex exponential Fourier series we can write signal xt as c minus 1 e power minus j omega naught t in place of omega naught we can write pi so we have e power minus j pi t plus c1 e power j pi t so this is how we can write the complex exponential Fourier series for the signal xt and we know the expression of coefficient cn cn is equal to 1 divided by t0 integration over t0 signal xt multiplied to e power minus jn omega0 t dt. In this integration we are having two functions of time. The first function is xt and the second function is e power minus jn omega0 t. So we will perform integration by parts method and as we are performing indefinite integration, we are not considering 
the range of integration so we can write cn equal to 1 divided by t naught inside the bracket first function integration of the second function minus integration differentiation of the first function multiplied to integration of the second function then integration of whole so we have written this using the integration by parts method and we already know the shortcut to select the first function we use the shortcut i late according to this shortcut if we have algebraic and exponential functions we are always going to choose algebraic function but we don't know about signal xt we don't know whether it is algebraic or trigonometric or logarithmic or inverse trigonometric but we know one thing that whenever we have any function along with exponential we are always going to choose exponential as the second function because it is coming at the last so we will choose xt as the first function and e power minus j and omega naught t as the second function so let's write down cn along with our first and second functions xt integration e power minus j n omega naught t dt minus integration differentiation of signal xt multiplied to integration of e power minus j n omega naught t dt integration of whole so this is what we have and we know integration of e power minus j n omega naught t is equal to e power minus j n omega naught t divided by minus j n omega naught so in place of integration of e power minus j n omega naught t we will write its value and it is equal to e power minus j n omega naught t divided by minus j n omega naught here also we will get the same result e power minus j n omega naught t divided by minus j n omega naught you can see minus j n omega naught is common in both these terms and also it is independent of time so it is constant and we can take it out so we have cn equal to minus 1 over jn omega naught t naught inside the bracket xt multiplied to e power minus jn omega naught t minus integration differentiation of xt multiplied to e power minus jn omega naught t integration of whole let's multiply two in numerator as well as in denominator and uh, let's say after performing the integration and putting the range of integration we are having some value and let's say that value is equal to b and minus 2 minus 2 b divided by omega naught t naught is equal to a naught so finally we are going to get cn equal to a naught divided by 2jn so we are having cn it is equal to cn is equal to a naught divided by 2jn and therefore when n is equal to 1 we will get c1 and it is equal to a naught divided by 2j and when n is equal to minus 1 we will get c minus 1 and it is equal to minus a naught divided by 2j now we will put values of c1 and c minus 1 here and we will get xt it is equal to minus a naught divided by 2j multiplied to e power minus j pi t plus a naught divided by 2j multiplied to e power j pi t i will take a naught common so we are having a naught inside the bracket e power j pi t minus e power minus j pi t divided by 2j and this is nothing but sin pi t so signal xt is equal to a naught sin pi t now it is important to calculate a naught and we can calculate a naught using the information number four 
It says 1 over 2 integration 0 to 2 mod x t square dt is equal to 1. This is equivalent to 1 over t naught because t naught is equal to 2. Integration 0 to t naught mod x t square dt equal to 1. And we know this is the formula of average power. So the average power is given in the information number 4. It is equal to 1. And we already know a naught sine pi t is having the average power equal to a naught square divided by 2 amplitude square divided by 2 and from information number 4 we know average power is equal to 1 so from here we can calculate a naught a naught is equal to plus minus root 2 so we have signal xt signal xt is equal to under root sine pi t and it is also equal to minus under root 2 sine pi t and now we will move to the options option a says signal xt is root 2 sine pi t which is true and it also says it is unique which is incorrect so option a is incorrect option b says signal xt is root 2 sine pi t which is true but not unique it is also true because xt is also equal to minus root 2 sine pi t so option b is the correct option option c and option d are incorrect because here expression of signal xt is incorrect so this is all for this question if you have any doubt you may ask in the comment section i will end this lecture here see you in the next one